7 Dangerous Hamster Products Sold in the Pet Store. Unfortunately, we live in a world where not everything stocked on the shelves is safe for us or our pets. Big corporations have one thing in mind, and that is profit, so it's important for us to properly educate ourselves on dangerous products so that we can avoid them and not harm us or our pets. Hamster cars and hamster balls. Now I've made an entire video dedicated to talking about why hamster balls and cars are not safe for hamsters, so I will leave that linked if you'd like to check that out because I'm just going to quickly touch on the reasons why they're not safe. Number one, they have a lack of ventilation and the ventilation slits are actually just slightly large enough for a hamster's toe or even a small paw to get caught in, which can obviously cause injuries like a broken foot. Number two, hamsters have no way of stopping. It is a spherical round plastic object and once you get going, it's very hard to break or stop. So a hamster is very likely to crash into a wall or furniture or even roll down stairs, which obviously can cause injuries and be very stressful. Number three, a hamster is forced to run in a ball because that is essentially the only thing they can do. There is no way to tell if your hamster actually likes running in a hamster ball because it is spherical. Once again, if you take a step, anytime you take a step, you are going to end up rolling. So. Just because your hamster's running doesn't mean they like it. Number four, it prevents a hamster from using any of their natural senses, such as hearing, sense of smell, and their whiskers, which they use a lot of the times to judge distance, which it's very hard to do any of these things when you're in a plastic contraption. Overall, it's a really stressful experience for your hamster, and there are plenty of safe ways you can get your hamster out and exercising, such as a homemade playpen. These can be very cheap and easy. You can also use a store-bought playpen, a dry bathtub or a shower with a closing door, or a hamster-proofed room in which they can safely free roam in. Wire and mesh wheels. Wire and mesh wheels are very dangerous for a hamster because they have such small paws and limbs, it's very easy for them to get caught in the mesh or the wire. Also think about if you were to try to run on a wire runged wheel. How difficult would that be to start going really fast and then accidentally slip and fall into one of the rungs? Not only would you probably get caught and go around a couple of times, you may end up twisting your leg or something like that. Bumblefoot is another health issue that can be caused by wire and mesh wheels. Bumblefoot is when a hamster gets a wound on their paw, which is more likely to happen on a wire mesh wheel. They are a lot sharper and can very easily cause a cut. And this cut then proceeds to get infected, which causes a disgusting bubbling on the foot. And it's obviously very painful for your hamster because they have to walk on their foot. Many wire and mesh wheels also have a bar that goes across and I firsthand have seen a hamster get its leg stuck in this bar and its back leg almost nearly got ripped off. So instead, opt for a safe, large, solid running surface such as a Wodent wheel or a Silent Runner wheel. Both of these wheels are my all-time favorites and they come in a variety of sizes and they are very safe. Wet tail drops. These are drops to cure said wet tail. But what actually is wet tail? So on the back of the bottle, they claim that wet tail is a stress-induced disease. While this is partly true, and that stress does cause an animal to have a lowered immune system, therefore making it easier for bacteria and other things to harm them, wet tail isn't just caused by stress. Wet tail is a specific bacteria, Lysonia intracellaris. I very much butchered that. And this is a bacteria that causes a thickening in the small intestine, which then proceeds to cause serious diarrhea, which is then called wet tail. Um, because when a hamster has pretty bad diarrhea, essentially their whole bottom becomes wet, including their tail. So that is why it's called wet tail. This bacteria is transmitted when a hamster ingests food or water that's been contaminated by the bacteria through poop. So if your hamster has been living at home for years, it's very unlikely for your hamster to have true wet tail because there's actually no way for them to 
come across this bacteria if they're living in your home, unless you've recently just brought home a new hamster. So your hamster is more likely to have just regular normal diarrhea or a bacteria that has very similar symptoms to true wet tail. So yes, a hamster who is stressed is more unlikely to be able to fight off these bacteria because their immune system is lowered. So the wet tail drops are actually more likely to cure regular diarrhea than they are to cure true wet tail. If your hamster has true wet tail, they are going to need to see a veterinarian who is going to prescribe you with hamster safe antibiotics. They may also help your hamster with any dehydration and possibly force feed them. Waterless hamster shampoo. Yes, this exists. If you didn't already know, hamsters are not supposed to be bathed. It can very easily wreck their coat as well as they can easily develop a cold if they're not dried off good enough. Hamsters groom themselves and they maintain their coats very well as long as you provide them with sand. Waterless shampoos should not be used on hamsters because, first of all, many of these waterless shampoos, the first ingredient is water, and the rest of the ingredients actually are very similar to a human shampoo, which if you didn't know, which most people don't know, human shampoos a lot of the times are really bad for you. They're bad for your hair bad for your skin, they're bad for the environment. So you wanna avoid using waterless hamster shampoos. If you think your hamster stinks and you don't like it, then I probably wouldn't suggest getting an animal because they are gonna smell eventually. Pine and cedar shavings. Pine and cedar shavings, also known as softwood shavings, are very commonly found in the pet store. They come in a very huge bag for a very low, low price, and you're gonna think that's a great bargain, but it's not because they're dangerous. Both cedar and pine trees create special chemicals to protect the tree from bugs trying to eat it, as well as funguses, which is great for the tree. Yay, the tree can protect itself, but it's not great for your animal who's going to have to live on it. Cedar produces placactic acid, which is known to kill body cells, which if you didn't know, all the cells in your body are super important and you don't want them being killed off. Another thing is that it is a inhalation hazard to woodworkers. These are people who work around it. So that means they're only working around it for a certain amount of time, but it's still an inhalation hazard. Your small animal is living on this 24 seven and they have a way smaller respiratory than a human. So just think about how much more that would affect a small animal. Pine contains a similar chemical and instead it is called abatic acid and it is known as a skin and respiratory irritant. Long-term use of these beddings can result in skin irritations, which can lead to fur loss and allergies, as well as upper respiratory infections, which is something you don't want to deal with, I promise you, if you can't get it treated soon enough, your hamster will end up dying. Instead, use a safe hamster bedding. There are plenty on the market. There is paper-based beddings, which all, most of them are safe as long as they're not scented. You can also use aspen shavings and hemp shavings, and these are basically the only two shavings I know of that are safe, and they don't contain the same chemicals pine and cedar do. Cotton nesting. Cotton is very easily found in the pet store. It may come under other names such as cotton fluff or fluff nesting or bamboo cotton nesting. And it makes it seem like a good idea because it looks super soft and warm and your hamster's gonna have a good night's sleep. But unfortunately, it's unsafe. Cotton fluff has long stranded fibers which make it very easy for it to get wrapped around limbs, fingers, nails, even teeth when your hamster is pouching it. Now because it's long stranded, this also makes it very hard for a animal to rip it apart um, or break it apart. So if it gets wrapped around a limb, a hamster may struggle to remove it. And if they can't remove it and you don't notice in time, they can end up with circulation loss. Um, and if it prolongs long enough, your hamster can lose a limb. Or some animals, if they realize their limb is going numb, they will chew it off. Something you don't want your pet to go through. Cotton fluff is an unnecessary expense when there are way safer options out there that are cheaper, such as toilet paper. This is a digestible and 
shreddable and rippable material that most people have at home. Um, so it is pretty cost friendly. And lastly, hamster leashes. Hamsters are animals that should never be put on a leash. They should not be walked like a dog. They are very small and fragile animals. In order to actually put a harness or leash on your hamster, you would have to put it on pretty tightly because they are pretty fluffy. And so in order for them to not squeeze out, you're gonna have to put it pretty tight on them, which not only is gonna be uncomfortable for a hamster because most hamsters don't want to feel squeezed, um, they also can very easily hurt themselves if they get pulled by the leash it can injure them or if they suddenly dart and they lose slack of the leash they can also be pulled back and it can also hurt themselves another thing is if you don't put the leash on or harness on tight enough your hamster can obviously easily slip out which then leaves you with a escaped lost hamster and some people like to take their hamster outside on leashes which just makes it even worse because then you're definitely not gonna get your hamster back. Once again, there are plenty of safe options to be able to take your hamster out and exercise without it being dangerous. And if you can't safely take your hamster out without a hamster ball or a hamster leash, I honestly would not recommend owning a hamster because then you don't, how would you ever interact with them if you don't have anywhere safe to actually interact with them. These are just some of the common dangerous products I see in pet stores. Obviously there probably is plenty more out there, which is why it's really important we educate ourselves about what is safe for hamsters and what is not so that we can learn what to avoid. And we can also save ourselves money if we know what to avoid because then you're not spending it on junk products. You can spend it on something good that won't hurt your hamster. So I hope this video has been able to help quite a few people and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!